You. Yes, you. One of the many people who found me through my video about every clue slash hint in Return of the Obra Dinn. Since watching that video, you've been subscribed to my YouTube channel, and you've seen every Obra Dinn video I've uploaded since. But you know what? This video was dog shit! And honestly, Return of the Obra Dinn is a dog shit game to make a YouTube channel off of. Not that I don't like it or anything. I mean, it's my favorite video game of all time, but you can only fucking play it once. I will run out of Oberdin content to make. So for the love of God, if you like my presentation style, please go check out some of the other videos I've made. Here's a good one where I attempted to summarize 10 random Wikipedia pages. And here's one of my favorite videos ever, where I completed one new achievement from 20 of my Steam games. All right, now that that rant is over, welcome to my third Obra Dinn character chronology video. This is a series where I analyze the actions of every person aboard the Obra Dinn. In the first video, I analyzed the officers. Last time, we looked at the tradesmen. So in this video, we will be exploring the actions of every passenger on the ship. I promise I'll get into the passengers in a moment. I just want to add some details to something I talked about in the last video. So anyway, in the previous part, I proposed some theories as to why Winston Smith was the carpenter on the Obra Dinn, even though he was American and black. Originally, I thought he must have escaped from slavery, or more likely he was granted freedom through manumission. However, I think I found a more likely explanation. So during the time that the return of the Oberdin is set, American sailors were often impressed by the British Navy. If you don't know, impressed is just a fancy word meaning forced to work for a foreign military. Anyway, impressment actually became such a big issue that it was one of the causes that led to the War of 1812. So saying all this, I think that Winston must have been a slave on an American ship and he was granted his freedom after he was impressed by the British Navy since if a slave was impressed, he would usually be given relative freedom. The only flaw with this theory is that the Oberdin isn't a navy ship, although it's not terribly crazy to assume Winston could have found his way onto a merchant ship somehow. Abigail Hoskett Witterell is Scottish, and she's the wife of Captain Robert Witterell, and also the sister of William Hoskett. We learn all of this because in the end 4, the captain explains to his implied dead wife that he shot her brother. Abigail, your brother, my friend, I shot him. And since we knew the captain shot William Hoskett, and Abigail has both Hoskett and Witterall in her name, it must have been her brother. Anyway, Abigail only appears in the Doom 8 where she stepped out of her quarters to see what was happening on the deck. She can be identified since Martin shouts, Unfortunately, she should have listened to Martin, because moments later she was struck and killed by falling rigging. Now this appearance is particularly interesting because it's her only scene even though it's so late in the game. Part of it makes you wonder what she was doing the entire time. I guess the obvious answer is that she was just in the captain's cabin since she's his wife, but it's odd that the only time she ventured outside was during a goddamn Kraken attack. In the end, she was neither fined nor awarded by the East India Company. Additionally, the fates clubbed by Beast and crushed by Beast are also acceptable when marking her death. Nunzio Pasqua is an Italian musician, and similar to Abigail, he only appears in one scene. Now Nunzio is interesting because we don't actually know why he was on the Oberdin. I guess the most likely explanation was that he needed transport to a port that the Oberdin planned to stop at. But why the hell would an Italian man be going from Falmouth to Taiwan or Africa? Anyway, Nunzio appears in Murdered One where he stumbled across Edward Nichols stealing the shell. So Nichols stabbed him in the abdomen. A neat detail from this scene is that prominent violin music is played in the background and Nunzio is pictured with a violin in the underway sketch. Emily Jackson and Miss Jane Bird appear in exactly the same scenes as each other, so I'm going to talk about both of them in this section. Now, similar to Nunzio, it's unclear why they were on the Obra Dinn, since they're just two random English passenger women. 
They both first appear in the Doom 8, cowering outside the passenger cabins. They can be differentiated since one of them is wearing a ring, and Jane Bird is referred to as Miss Jane Bird in the manifest, so the one wearing the ring must be Emily Jackson. Additionally, it looks as if Emily is shielding Jane from the Kraken attack. In Escape 2, they're seen on the remaining rowboat preparing to escape to Africa. One of them shouts, before he was stabbed by Leonid. And lastly, in Escape 3, Leonid tried to board the rowboat, but Emily gave no shits and shot him with seemingly no hesitation or remorse. In contrast, Jane is cowering next to the seats. Their fate can be found based on the fact that they both escaped with Henry Evans, and in the preface of the book, Henry tells you to mail it back to Africa, suggesting that they are both alive in Africa. Another interesting detail is that Jane is the person who sends you the monkey paw and book at the end of the game. However, she signs the letter as just Jane Bird, so it's possible that she eventually got married, potentially to Davy James, since he's also alive in Africa. In the end, Jane was fined 10 pounds for abandoning the ship, and Emily was fined 35 pounds for abandoning the ship and killing Leonid, even though Leonid tried to kill her. You know what? This series has just taught me not to think about the East India Company fines because they almost never make sense. Bun Lan Lim is the first of the foremost in royalty on the Oberdin, and she's actually the niece of Ip Bang Sia, not the wife. The amount of people who think they're married drives me crazy. I mean, shit, he even refers to her as Miss Lim. Anyway, the Formosans are some of the more self-explanatory passengers because they were on the Oberdin just so they could transport themselves and the shells back to Taiwan. Bun Lan Lim herself first appears in Murder 2 during the execution. She attempted to explain to the officers that Hak Sang Lao wasn't guilty, but she was unsuccessful. Following the execution, in Murder 3, she was kidnapped and smuggled onto rowboats along with the shells. In The Calling 1, she's sitting in the rowboat, and it looks like her hands were restrained in some way. In The Calling 2, she's still in the rowboat, looking at Patrick O'Hagan get speared. Unfortunately, in The Calling 3, she's being choked by a mermaid, and she had no way to defend herself since her hands were restrained. Lastly, in The Calling 4, she died from her injuries in the previous scene. Bun Lan Lim was neither fined nor awarded by the East India Company, and the fate clawed or strangled by beast are both acceptable. Ip Bang Sia is the male member of the Formosan royalty on the Oberdin, and he's the uncle of Bun Lan Lim. He first appears in A Bitter Cold 2 sitting outside some of the passenger cabins. Additionally, he was being guarded by Chiu Tan. In A Bitter Cold 3, he's once again found chilling outside the passenger cabins. And in Murder 2, he's watching the execution while consoling Bun Lan Lim. Next in Murder 3, he's being kidnapped and loaded onto a rowboat by Alarcus and Lee Hong. All things considered, he looked kinda calm about the whole ordeal. Anyway, in The Calling One, he warned Bun Lan Lim about the monsters, and similar to her, he was restrained in the rowboat. Jesus Christ, look at how close he came to getting speared. In The Calling 2, he told Bun Lan Lim to stay down, and he started to use the end of the spear that killed Li Hong to cut his restraints. Moving on, in The Calling 3, he used a knife to slit the throat of Samuel Galligan. And in The Calling 4, he used the chest power to incapacitate the mermaids and stop them from attacking. This shows us that he had some form of knowledge about how the chests and shells worked. Finally, in The Calling 5, he died from his injuries in the previous scene. His fate can be marked as burned, electrocuted, or even poisoned. In the end, he was fined 25 pounds for killing Li Hong, even though Li Hong fucking kidnapped him. Jiu Tan was one of the foremost in guards aboard the Oberdin. He first appears in A Bitter Cold 2 and 3, guarding Ip Bang Sia outside of the passenger cabins. He next appears in Murder 2, guarding Ip Bang Sia and Bun Lan Lim during the execution. In The Calling 6, he shot Edward Nichols without any hesitation, even though he was told to Hold your fire! See, this is why I like you, Chiotan. Doing things nobody else has the balls to do, even though we all know Nichols deserves it. Finally, in Unholy Captives 1, he was interrogated by the captain about the shells right before he got spiked and promptly died because of the mermaids. As per usual, the East India Company fined him 25 pounds for killing Nichols. His fate can be marked as either speared by beast or just spiked. Hak Sang Lao is the second Formosan guard on the Oberdin. Unlike Chiu Tan, it seems that his job was more to protect the shells rather than the royalty. He first appears in Loose Cargo 1 and 2 outside the room where the chest is stored. 
He's next found in Murder 1, unconscious, with a club by his head. We can assume Nichols had just knocked him out in order to steal the shell. Unfortunately, Nunzio walked in on him, so Nichols stabbed Nunzio. Somehow, between Murder 1 and 2, Nichols managed to frame Hak Sang Lao for Nunzio's death, so he was executed by firing line. If you look carefully though, Brennan's musket ball was the only one to actually go through Hak Sang Lao, so his fate should be marked as shot by Henry Brennan. And already that's all of the passengers. <sighs> Sorry for the much shorter video. I've just been very, very busy recently and this was the only way I could get an Oberdin video up anytime soon. Hopefully I can make up for it since the next one will go over both the midshipmen and the stewards. Anyway, consider checking out the two videos I mentioned at the start because like I said, I can only make Oberdin content for so long. But regardless, I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye! Yep.